Oh, yeah, there's worse things in the world, isn't there? But you know, it's not great. So we're going to get some paint on this. I won't bother showing you that because it's just painting. Painting's a bit boring, isn't it? Unless you're going to do it nicely, and I'm not going to do it nicely. <laughs> Let's face it. Okay, so what I want to take care of now is the, the hardware. We've got a bolt here. That's just a M8 bolt at the minute. Uh, we've got a bolt here. That's an M10 bolt at the minute. Um, clamps that vertical. And we've got the bolt on the top, the, the pressure. This wants to have a bar and a winder on it. And the only other bolt that, that um, gets frequently, frequently molested is the, um, uh, perhaps that wasn't the right word. God, YouTube are gonna, YouTube are gonna kill me for that, aren't they? Uh, this bolt on the back here, so that uh, you gotta slacken that off to make your feed roll adjustment. I, I don't really slacken it off in practice. I just leave it a little bit loose all the time, but um, I'm going to want to alter the uh, the torque on that during operation probably so what I'm going to do here is um, have have the bolt come out a little ways and then put a knob on the back of it I suppose just so it's easier to use it doesn't have to this one doesn't have to be super tight it's the, it's the, this one doesn't ever get torqued up tight 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 so um, so yeah I expect that's it just nuts and bolts now, and a bit of paint on this, all right? Look at that wheel there, that came out pretty cool. Um, a lot easier to use like that. A lot easier to use. Okay. Okay, so we've got all the uh, all of my new screws and bolts and hardwarey things uh, blanked out. Um, feed roller pressure at this end. Um, tapping it was a mistake. Putting the putting the thread on it, sorry, was a was a mistake. So I'm gonna have to grip this somehow. Uh, but I wanted to show everyone the uh, the die holder. So unnecessary evil. This one. Uh, this is to tighten up the. Um, the roller bearing um, knurled at this end only needs a thread at that end and it's done these two need threads and as with the as with the first one they need a hole drilling um, across their across the head so that I can put a bar in there um, these two will just get bars simple bars this one will get a fixed bar I mean these, these two are going to be like a vice like this thing here on the vice so it'll be able to slide <laughs> okay, but this one, this one, as I said, uh, is going to get a um, something a little bit, a little bit more special. We'll have a, a fixed bar um, weighted at both ends and a spinny handle at one end as well, much like the uh, the the carriage handle on a lathe or something like that. Yep.
property in certain circumstances. If you are publicly open space, at least this is my understanding going back to Occupy Wall Street, then the private owner can't set special rules banning you for certain reasons. The, the bigger issue here is the infringement upon the common house. If there was a field with a fence around it, and they said if you... Okay, folks, so I'm happy to report I've uh, I finished all my hardware, hardware, um, whatever you want to call it, screws, bolts, bits and bobs, they all come out very nicely. Um, I'm not putting a, I'm not putting a spinny handle on this, I actually quite like this the way it is. Um, I, I could quite easily flatten off the tops of one of these spheres, one of these balls, and uh, you know, thread it and put a, put a windy handle on it. Maybe I'll do that, but right now, as long as as long as um, these threads are loose enough, this will spin. This will actually be quicker, I think, without the uh, spinning handle. So we're going to leave it like that. I like it. Looks nice. Another one, and also the uh, the adjustable uh, <laughs> pressure on the feed roller. Um, modified this what I'd like to do you see how this is blacked yeah a lot of it's worn off now because I've been working with it and I've you know caught it with paper or whatever that that face there is it's a nice it's a nice black this is actually what's known as blued um, I don't know what process they use there's many different processes you can use to to black and steel off like this some of them will send it black some of them will blue it and if you blew it enough then it will go black but um, what I want to do I want to get the rest of my bits and bobs black like this so i'm going to do a process what's known as um rust bluing it's it's the oldest process for for bluing stuff maybe it's the oldest process maybe it's not i i, I think it's the old it's it's the very traditional it's the first process used with firearms and that where basically we uh we have a nice bright steel object like this and we let it go rusty um but it has to be a has to be a nice consistent light flashing of rust and then we're going to throw it in boiling water, um, and that will turn the rust black. Eventually, we'll have to do we'll have to do it several times to build up a nice, uh, nice crusty layer. And it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. There's lots of uh, lots of bluing processes that aren't really that tough. They're more just for aesthetics, isn't it? If you uh, if you mess around with your gun, um, or if you scratch the finish or anything like that, you can put one of these finishes on it. One of the more aesthetic finishes off, no one will know. But this is a uh, this is quite quite a tough one. Um, uh, but that takes months, you know. It'll take a uh, it'll take a long time to uh, to blue to blue a gun barrel, let alone enough to make it go black. Yeah. Uh, so what what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna help it along a little bit with some hydrogen peroxide, and um, yeah, hopefully we can get this done inside uh, inside an hour or two. I, I don't know. I've never tried it before. I've just seen it. So uh, we'll give it a go. And if it goes horrifically badly, then uh, I suppose I'll be cleaning it all off again. First things first. I'm gonna clean it all with. Um, with acetone, then I'm going to use a caustic cleaning solution, so an alkaline cleaning solution, and that that will help. That will get the steel cleaner. Um, then I'll hit it with the hydrogen peroxide diluted a little bit with water, and then we'll stick it in boiling water. I don't know how long I have to do that for. It will be a little bit of trial and error, and uh, you know, rinse and repeat, I suppose, <laughs> until we get a nice black finish. All right. Okay, all right, we're degreased. Uh, now we need to etch. Normally, you'd want to etch, uh, etch steel with phosphoric acid. Um, yeah, let's have a bit more. Um, why is that? Hey, because it's a bit, it's a bit gentler than, than hydrochloric acid, which is what I'm using. I've just got some of this kicking around because I use it to clean um, various bits and bobs. Um, 
blah, 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 blah. Notice these aren't all bright because one of these one of these parts has already been blackened. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested to see how this will affect it. Either way, this is going in the. Uh... Oh wow. This is going in the acid etch whilst it's warm. Probably helps speed things up a bit. Um, it is warm. Jesus! Very warm. I can't actually fit the whole thing in there. Balls. Oh well, we'll work around that. Um, yeah. So it doesn't matter using hydrochloric acid. I hope it doesn't. Um, because we're going to get this all rusty anyway, aren't we? Yeah? Right, let me empty that. That needs to be water now. That's uh, that's busy etching the metal. That needs to be hot water. And I'm going to put some of the uh, some of the hydrogen peroxide in a squirty bottle so we can get a nice even coat on all our metal pieces. Maybe lay out some rag for it to sit on. Okay, peroxide going on. Spray. So, this is a very interesting process, and like I say, I don't understand the science behind it, I'm not going to pretend to. Um, it, yeah, obviously, hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizer, that's why it's making the steel rust so quickly. We know that much. Um, I mean, like in England, you can only buy it up to 12%, I think, or 30%, maybe, and owning, just being in possession of anything stronger than that is uh is illegal because uh you know they don't trust us much here you know but you know you could uh you could utilize it to make naughty things basically <coughs> if it's stronger than that um but either way uh i don't think this is a reaction with the air so it might work better if this was submerged or you know a weaker solution and submerging the parts uh but this is easier for me to be honest um, but I would add, I'm, I've got no idea of the health risks uh, associated with, you know, atomizing hydrogen peroxide. I don't think it's that naughty because like people use it to bleach the hair, don't they? So, um, yeah. Either way, we'll carry on like this, and uh, if I keel over, then you probably know not to, uh, not to spray hydrogen peroxide out of a squirty bottle, don't you? Well, this is a tremendous learning experience, folks. Hey, um, what we've got now is a uh, the water, water, um, and the parts. Look how black they're going. It's lovely, 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 jubbly. Um, after after my fingers started changing colour, uh, I'm using a gloved hand. Yeah, and we're putting them into a bag. We're nearly there. We need look how black that is, yeah. Um, putting them into a bag, and the bag's got the rags with the peroxide on it, and salty water as well, yeah. So they're going in there, and we're trying to keep it closed so I don't gas myself with the peroxide vapor. And what? Well, yeah, we're just hooking them out. In you go. In you go, chuckles. Yeah. You're going there as well. Lovely, and we've made more progress in the last five minutes than I have in the last hour. I want to do some experimenting with this, you know, because um, it's quite interesting. Where's that last bit? How do you get to, oh yeah, it was, was one left, one, oh. Don't use your fingers, you idiot. Yeah, and we'll just sling them back in. Try and keep it closed. You don't put the vapour everywhere. Put. I put um, a load of oil on my files because I couldn't be asked to move them, so uh, we squirted them with oil. But there's a lot of a uh, lot of probably pretty pretty nasty vapors floating around at the minute. Um, probably I'll be dead before my files go rusty, you know. Um, but yeah, they're in there now. And um, so what we got the salt water, 
salt water can go on. Have some of that, you fucking spy. And a bit more peroxide. Ooh, don't want to breathe that in. Don't want to breathe that in. Cut the holes in my bag. Probably even best to get a bag that doesn't have holes in it, you know? You give them a little, a little tumble about. Yeah, nice. Nice. Lovely. Now it'll be all rusty next time we see him. Look at the state of this stunner then, hey? I am dead chuffed with, uh, with how this has turned out, but I've still not tested it yet. I mean, the uh, primary focus of this uh, this project was to increase the um, capacity, uh, as far as thickness is concerned, that this machine can cope with, and also um allow it to um you know do round stuff um and the uh hand wheel at the end here was a little a little bonus yeah so uh i think it's i think it's probably time to give it a go and, and see what happens with it okay i've got this thing working um seems to be doing a fairly decent job uh there's significantly more resistance when when doing something like this than just passing passing a piece of metal through straight but kind of expected that I and mean, we're pulling it through the rollers at an angle essentially it's an angle going in and an angle coming out so uh it's, it's gonna gonna give a bit more resistance and it's, it's it's pretty hard to turn the uh turn the wheel i'm glad i put the wheel on there definitely um and this is this is a pretty old skanky piece of aluminium as well so it's hardened up quite a bit so uh so what um i'm not going to make the pulleys now uh the whole reason i did this was to make pulleys for the crane um i've got to, got to figure out what size they need to be and all the rest and maybe make a couple more rollers but to demonstrate this thing working i thought it'd be nice to to make a hubcap for the crane because uh, <laughs> what i mean that's that's the, the 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 comment in the in the comment section about making a hubcap uh that's that's what made me think about using this to make pulleys in the first place and you know I've not seen anyone else making pulleys with a bead roller before so if I pull that off that'll be a little bit of an achievement I'll be happy about that but um so what let's uh, let's make a banging banging hubcap for the uh, for the crane yeah
<sighs> okay, so uh, let, let me just say that these uh, these dies that come with the machine, I think they're primarily for working with steel. You know, they, they've got some edges on them, and uh, soft aluminium doesn't like them. And I'll, you know, I'm a bit reluctant to uh, to knock the edges off because it will make it harder to work the steel. What I really need to do is make a set of plastic dies for for the aluminium. But you know, I've not had this thing very long. But either way, that's uh, <laughs> that's the TCME hubcap. Um, uh, letters could perhaps be a bit neater. Uh, it, it proves the point anyway. This uh, this should uh, should do what I want it to do as long as I can keep things flat and straight. Let's uh, let's let's clean up the scratches on this. I'll put a bit of paint in the grooves and then uh, we'll stick it on the crane and that'll be it. Look at that beauty then, eh? <laughs> okay. Well, that was just a bit of fun. Nothing serious, but um, at least uh, at least shows how this thing's supposed to work. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, pretty happy with this. I've got I've got other bits I need to do. I need to make up more rollers and that uh, as and when I need them, I suppose. But I'm going to get some material in stock. I've got some nice big lumps of nylon I should be using for working with aluminium. That'll be better than these uh, sharp edge steel dies, um, rollers, whatever you want to call them. But I'm happy of how everything else turned out. You know, um, very pleased very pleased all right so i hope this has been useful to someone and vaguely amusing to everyone else and uh i'll catch you all later all right bye bye